Good morning, church. Hey, it's Pastor Tom, and this is Palm Sunday. Hey, good morning, church. This is Palm Sunday. It's Pastor Tom here, and we're excited about you joining with us this morning. We're live our third week in a row, and we are excited that you are going to join us this morning. You're here, and um, we are here this morning. Remember, we're going to do communion, so hopefully you've got that together. And I pray that you've lit a candle at your house somewhere. We've got our candle lit down here. Just to celebrate unity within the, within the, within the body of Christ. Well, this morning we're going to have prayer. Our worship team is ready. They've been practicing and they're, they're fired up and ready to go. I pray that you are too. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Who you are in our lives. Who you are, Father, in our church. Who you are, Father God, in our body. Now, Lord, I pray that you bless this service, bless our time, to bless the message, the Palm Sunday message. Father, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. and to see your river runs with love for me and i will open up my heart and let the healer set me free i'm happy to be in the truth and i will daily lift my hands for i will always sing of when your love came down yeah mountains and the sea. Your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands for I will always sing. When your love came down, yeah, I could sing of your love forever. 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 dancing it's foolishness I know but when the world has seen the light they will dance with joy like we're dancing now I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. 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 I could sing of your love forever.
Everything's non-traditional right now, even in our giving. Even in our giving. Now, this is Palm Sunday, and I pray that you uh, take some moments, take, take some time to remember the sacrifice that God made for each and every one of us. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and we're looking forward to that, like we said earlier. And, um, we just really hope that's going to be a blessed day. Um, we'd love to be together, but obviously we're not going to be able to be. But you know what? Easter Sunday is still going to happen. We're still going to have service. It's just going to look different. And I'll also, um, just remember, again, communion today. And, and uh, be sure you give your tithes and offerings. There's different ways you can give. You can go online at DunkirkNazarenChurch.org. Or sorry, DunkirkNazarene.org. I'm sorry. Um, you can mail your check in, or you can stop by the office. And One of us is usually here, except for Tuesday. You can just give it to us. Um, the church has to keep moving. This has to keep going, so um, be sure you're, you're, you're being faithful in your tithes and offerings. And I know that it's really non-traditional. Um, a lot of people have started to give online now, which is really good. So um, let me pray for the offering, Father. This morning, we love you. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. Bless those that give, whether it be online or their mail, their check-in, or whatever the case might be. Father, God, bless them. We love you so much, Father, and it's in your name we pray.
Aren't you glad this morning that we serve a God who is faithful? He is faithful. He's faithful to His children. And He loves us completely. Again, I'm going to be sitting in a chair because I move around too much. And um, if I don't sit down, I'll move and will be able to keep track of me. So, um, this morning, Palm Sunday. I'm so glad that you're all joining us this morning. Um, I was watching the video a little bit, and I know it's a little bit blurry, but I'll deal with this this, with this week, and hopefully next week we'll have a much better situation for our video. And, um, but God is good, amen, all the time, and all the time, God is good. You see, on Palm Sunday, there's different ways of looking at things. One person may see a tragedy, Another may see an opportunity. See, both see the same event on Palm Sunday. It was, it was a time of cheers, and it was a time of tears. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem was planned out for a long time. Not just the months of travel, but the event of Passion Week were planned out before the world was even created. You see, Jesus is the Lamb of God who was slain at the foundation of the world. There were hints throughout Scripture. Prophets spoke of this week, possibly unknowingly, but with great detail, and the prophecies will be fulfilled in amazing detail. A Savior is coming to town. But what does that mean for those people on hand to witness the event? What does it mean to you? Cheers and tears for whom? See, Mark 11, one, th Mark 11, 1 through 11, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. See, the Jews were looking for a king, a hero. They were looking for somebody who was going to come in on a white stallion, and they were going to save them from the Roman tyranny. And it goes to say, in the first time of the verse 1, it says, As they approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter, you'll find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why you were doing this, say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and find a found a colt outside in the street, tied at the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying this colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. And as he rode in, many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming King, our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. And he looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out of Bethany with the twelve. Hosanna was the word of the day. Hosanna is the highest praise. It means praise, yes. But it also means save us. What those words mean. Save us from whom? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The king of our father David. These words are explosive and have dangerous, volatile meanings. Explore the point of view from the different characters in the story. Save us. The first one we're going to look at is Jerusalem. The priests and the religious leaders. Rome. Pilate washes his hands, right? Rome, not so bad. Pax Romana. Gold was peace and prosperity. They were far better than the Greeks before them, or the Babylonians, or the Assyrians, the Egyptians. But these, for these religious leaders, save us, meant save us from Jesus. They had been, there had been trouble, rumors, the priests were very uneasy. Better for one man to die than a nation. And all this comes about at Passover. 
We'll have riots on our hands. The disciples, the second people, the zealots, the fishermen, Judas, Peter, saved to be prompted from the bottom to the top. Jesus shows all the classic signs of being the Messiah that they had hoped for. Heal the sick, sick, I'm sorry. Restore the sight to the blind, make the lame walk to deaf ear, right? He did all those things. And he even raised the dead to life. The multitudes are waiting. Waiting on pins and needles for one more famous than the Beatles. The crowd, cloaks and branches, rebel flags. For six centuries, people had been aching. They'd been aching for a savior. Like the Maccabees, someone who would deliver them from Greece, now deliver us from Rome, the zealots, were willing to raise the sword. You see, Jesus came into town lowly riding on a colt. You see, see, usually if a king's coming, he rides in on this white stallion, this huge white stallion, and everybody's celebrating, and they're, the king has come. But Jesus rides in on a donkey. A donkey's job was to serve. The donkey's job was to reach out was to be the servant to bring Jesus in. Um, but that was his job. When people saw him, they cheered. Because they believed that he was there to save them and, sit, and stake God's kingdom on earth. And to set up God's kingdom right on earth. You might want to turn me up a little bit, Kevin. Some people are saying that they can't hear me. Okay. Thanks, buddy. What we think we need to be saved from isn't always what God intends us to be saved from. Zechariah 9.9 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the colt and its owner, known to Jesus or honored to donate, Nobody knows if this owner of this colt or this donkey knew who Jesus was. All he knew was that Jesus needed it. And he was honored to donate it. Jesus was not telling his disciples to go hotwire a donkey for him. Why a donkey that had never been ridden? Ancient traditions forbid anyone but the king to ride on his donkey or colt. The donkey had red carpet created by the clothes, by the clothes of the people. Imagine how that donkey must have felt. I must be someone special. And how about that page? City of Figs. Unripe Figs. Figs. City built on the direction of the Sanhedrins. To this day, there's an annual Palm Sunday possession, procession that travels from Bethpage to Jerusalem. Other seats for the Sanhedrin. The seat of the law, Deuteronomy 17. The red heifer altar, ashes, purified to the red heifer, the, 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 the sacrifice. There had to be a sacrifice. You see, there had to be bloodshed. There had to be bloodshed. A place outside the city limits for the sacrifice that would cleanse the Jews. And not far from this place is the location outside of the camp where Jesus would be crucified. To cover the sins of the world if they only knew. Then how about Jesus? Kingdom at, is at hand. But not like they thought. This king came to die. This king came to pay the ultimate sacrifice. That he would be bruised for our iniquities. He would be beaten and scorned for our sins. The passage of Jerusalem would likely pass the tombs of the prophets. Shortly after passing this holy place, Jesus wept. Behind him were the tombs of the prophets, slain, not by outsiders, but by the Jews. Ahead, he could see the shimmering golden pinnacle of the temple. A tomb of its own, but in its own way. If he 
you only knew. Jesus was fulfilling the prophecies scattered throughout the Old Testament. But let's listen to some of the other chilling prophecies this journey of Jesus fulfilled. Isaiah 50, 6-7 it says, I offered my back to those who beat me. This is Isaiah 50 again, 6-7. My cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be shamed. Cheers all around, right, except for one. Everybody was cheering. He was entering in, everybody was excited, because here he comes, the king. He's going to be the one. And everybody's excited, except for Jesus himself. He looked at the city through tears. So many times he tried to get through to them. He sent prophets. He worked miracles. Nothing seemed to really wake them up. Even the one who, who once were cheering them. Even the ones that were cheering them were doing it on a selfish basis. They wanted Jesus to tend to their agenda to rescue them. And Jesus set his face like flint to go to Jerusalem. The ultimate destination was the temple. Hosanna, save us. It's still a prayer today, isn't it? In the lips of many, my child is sick, save them. I know all about that. My grandson was sick, I beg God. My marriage is, is, is a mess. My marriage is breaking up. So many things are happening within, within my relationship with my husband or wife. My health is failing. Please save me, Lord. I have no purpose, no direction. Save me, Lord. My children are lost. Save me, Lord. One of the most dangerous things that you can do is to confront people when their ideas are wrong. Jesus had the courage to do this. He had the courage to enter Jerusalem boldly. Jesus was the fulfillment of the promise made to King David. The Davidic covenant in 2 Samuel 7. You'll always have an heir to sit on the throne and rule. God promises to build a house, a dynasty through David's lineage that will endure forever. Kingdoms crumble with downfall and Zedekiah and overthrown by Babylon. He died in exile as the last king. And the last king Zedekiah saw was the execution of his son. There's great irony here. Ezekiel 11.23 Ezekiel saw the glory of God leave the temple. Leaves the east gate of the city and ascends to Bethany on the Mount of Olives. On the day we call Palm Sunday, in the triumphal entry, the one who carries the brightness of God's glory descends from Bethany to the Mount of Olives and enters the east gate of the holy city and went to the temple. The glory of God that left the temple in 586 BC now returns. It returns. Yet no one understood that the king of glory was in their midst. Nobody got it. Nobody could, could grasp the concept that here he is. Here he is. The king of the Jews. The king is coming. The king is here. That's why Jesus wept. Tree interpreted God's promise to establish David's throne forever. The Jews decided that it must not refer to to literal kings, but that God would raise up a king and anoint one, or Messiah, who would reign forever. Save me. Save me. Not a, a, not a plea to be spoken lightly. You see, it may require something from you and from me. 
And I require all your props, all your hopes, and all your dreams. What do you think you need rescued from? Your job? Your spouse? Your kids? This is a kind of an interesting time for parents, isn't it? As they go through this whole quarantine time with their children. I've seen some of you post little funny things on Facebook. And um, I pray that, uh, that you get through this time. Summer's coming when you throw them outside, okay? It's coming. How about parents, kids? Maybe your parents are driving you crazy. Maybe you need to be safe with your parents. School. How about bullies and relationships? Take a moment this morning. Figure out what the common denominator is in your life. What's the common denominator? You are, right? You're the common denominator. The next step is dare me to be like Jesus. Dare me to be like Jesus. What does that mean? Dare me to be like Him in His holiness. Dare me to be like Him in His commitment. Dare me to be like Him in, in, in His character. Dare me to be like Him in His walk. Dare me to be like Him in His holiness. Examine your life for areas that you need to be rescued from. What are those things in your life that you really just need to be, need to, you need to be rescued from? Selfishness, self-centeredness, um, whatever it could be, whatever that, that sin in your life is, that you need to just surrender to God. Now's the time. Now's the time. What does saved mean to God, your Father? How does the good news of Christ apply to that situation? How does the good news of Christ apply to your situation? He's the King of Kings, and He is the Lord of Lords. See, on this Palm Sunday, they were waving the palms back and forth. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our king is here. He's arrived. And they were looking for him to come in and make a huge difference in their lives. They were looking for him to come in and change their world. That was his plan. But not by their plan. He had another idea. Amen? He had another thought. I'm going to go a little deeper, okay? Do me a favor. Sometime today, sometime today, get online and listen to the song by Laura Story called Blessings. And stop and consider how blessed we are. The things that God has blessed us with. Make a list of the things that you've been asking God to save you from. Make a list. Put it down on a piece of paper. Make a list of all those things that you've, got, that you've been asking God to save you from. Is it possible that you are the one that needs to be turned around? That you are the one that needs to turn your face towards God? Could that be the case this morning? Salvation. Repentance. Baptism. These are words that belong together. Do you need to act on any of these things? Look at your life. We enter into Holy Week. Just take a moment this morning and examine your life. Just take a moment and look at where you're at in your own life with God. Take a moment and see that God is good. Take a moment and see that, that you, maybe you are in need of salvation. Your life is a mess. 
You need to be touched by God. Maybe you just need to repent of some of the sins that you have in your life. Maybe you've walked this walk and you've given your life to Christ, but you've, been, you've just been inundated with sin. And you just surrender those things to God. And as we do all those things, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, may the Spirit fall fresh on you. This morning, I want to let you know that God loves you. And the sacrifice that he made for you is real. That Palm Sunday, as he walked in, as he rode in, I guess I should say, in the East Gate, was the beginning of the beginning. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. This morning I told you we would be doing communion together. And I'm going to walk down here to the front and take care of my, my, my worship team that's here this morning in communion. Tyler, if you and Greg would come up and pass these out, I'd appreciate that. I hope you're able to do this with us this morning. I really do. It's important that we uh, take this time as we gather together here to do communion together. I think this is honoring and glorifying to God. I think He will be blessed by this. Some of them are laughing because Pastor Tom forgot to get the grape juice. I'll just be honest and transparent. So we're using sweet tea this morning for our, for our uh, juice, but I think that'll be okay. It's just a representation of God's blood that he sacrificed and he made for us each this morning. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Brother Greg. On that day, they were gathered together around the table, the Last Supper. And Jesus knew what was coming his way. He knew. And uh, so they, they were gathered together and he said, um, as he was talking to his disciples, I know I'm moving around, I know I can't say, I can't say so. it so. They, they were talking, was talking to his disciples and um, they were having a conversation probably about looking towards the week and that kind of stuff like that. And Jesus says, pass the cup. And he passed the bread. And he said, um, as he, as he gave him the bread, he said, and he broke the bread with him. He said, take this bread. This, take this bread and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Let's take this together this morning. And he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks. And he gave praise. And he told his disciples, this is my blood. It's the blood, and listen to that statement, this is the blood of the covenant that I make with you. Of the covenant that I make with you. What is a covenant but a contract? He said, if I do all these things, I'm signing a contract with you and saying, you know, I will be back. I'm going to be the salvation of the world. I'm going to provide for you salvation. And he said, take the cup. And they drank it together. Let's do that together this morning. Mm. This morning, I want to thank you for watching with us this morning. Um, next week, we're going to have our other camera hooked up, and I think it's going to be a lot better. I want to thank you for the last three weeks, how you have blessed us, and how you've blessed our church, just by joining with us. We love you, and we praise you, and we thank you for just being part of who we are. Let's close in prayer. Father, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, 
for this beginning of Holy Week, this Palm Sunday. We gather together and we, we celebrate you, Father. We celebrate who you are because you are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord Jesus, that we're able to come together like this through technology, Father, and I know that um, it's not traditional. So many other people being reached, Father, for, for the gospel. We're thankful for that this morning. Bless the rest of our day, Father. May we constantly be in thought of who you are and who you want to be in our lives. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. And it's in your master's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless.